Hi, I am Ray, G4NSJ. Just clear this. I'm going to talk about a triplexer that I bought recently. This is the uh, the little Nano VNA, the 2.8 inch screen one. Anyway, I've just done a video on that, so you'll be seeing that soon. Um, right, triplexer. First of all, before we start, I've written this down. Okay, on the on the website page because. I want to tell you the difference between a diplex and a triplex. Uh, so I'm getting it wrong already. It's my brain. It's already a diplexer and a duplexer. Right, a diplexer, which is what I've got, except it's a triplexer. <laughs> don't, don't, don't start. A diplexer is a device that allows two different transceivers, okay, two totally different radios, to share one single aerial. So you've got coax from one, coax from another, into the diplexer and then one coax up to the aerial right both the signals need to be on very different frequencies for example six meters and two meter aperture band that's what 50 megs 145 100 100 megs apart there's a huge separation and what you can do is transmit on six meters you're having a chat to someone on six you'll be chatting away there and you can be listening to another station on two meters on the same aerial with a two meter radio connected to the diplexer. Uh, yeah, I've had to write this down because I confused myself. Um, basically, in the diplexer are like bandpass filters, two bandpass filters. There are different ways. You can have a low pass filter and a high pass filter. But let's just say for now, two bandpass filters. So the six meter filter only passes six meters and the two meter filter only passes two meters now the, the duplexer which we're not really interested in is because it's not what we're talking about but that allows a transmitter and receiver to operate on very similar frequencies take our local two meter repeater right the it trans the repeater transmits on 145.6 megs and it receives on 145 there's only 600 kilohertz between the transmit and the receive and as you know with a repeater it's got to do this at the same time you're chatting through the repeater it's receiving you and retransmitting you at only 600 kilohertz apart it uses things like cavities okay to get that isolation between the two but we're only interested in the diplexer or in my case the triplexer which separate signals which are separated anyway. For example, my triplexer I'm going to tell you about, it covers six meters, two meters, and 70 centimeters. Now those three bands are way far apart. You know, they're megs and megs and megs apart, unlike a repeater, 600 kilohertz apart, transmit and receive. And you can usually expect uh, isolation, sort of 60, 50, 60 dB isolation between the different bands so what you can do with my triplexer for example what i do is i've got one tri-band aerial which covers six two and seventy centimeters all right so from that i've got one bit of coax now if you've got a radio a shack in a box as they call it with one socket on the back uh, you can plug your tri-band area into that then on the radio choose six meters two meters or 70 centimeters one aerial socket one aerial one bit of coax i like separate radios so i've got a six meter radio a two meter radio and a 70 sems radio and one tri-band aerial so i've got to split that coax coming in i can either switch it to different different radios or I can use a triplexer. Right, now have a look at this diagram. Now on the left, sorry, it's not a very good diagram. It's a bit of paper that I have with the triplexer. So it's, uh, I photographed it, it's a bit screwed up. On the left, that's what I've got. Three separate radios going into the triplexer, then one coax to the tri-band aerial. Okay, but you can also use this the other way around. On the right, you've got one radio going into the triplexer which then goes to three separate aerials so it is a, a bi-directional device if you like you can use it either way so i've got it the way it is on the left three separate radios just made some coffee 
Now, I'm going to show, I can't show you the triplexer on the bench because I've installed it over there. I'll show you that in a minute. But here's a photo of it. So it's a box and you've got an SO239 socket uh, on one side and on the other side, three pieces of coax coming out to PL259 plugs. You can stick those in the radios. Uh, <laughs> excuse all the other wires. Here it is installed. It's stuck to the wall. You get it on the back of it is um, a bit of Velcro. So I've stuck it to the wall. <laughs> not a professional job, but it does work. <laughs> now, um, I'm not going to go into a load of figures. I'm not going to show you this on a Spectrum analyzer because I haven't got one. <laughs> I haven't. I'm thinking of buying the tiny, was it Tiny SA? You know, the Nano VNA, this. Well, they do a similar thing. Uh, which is a tiny SA, a tiny spectrum analyzer. And I'm thinking about getting one of those. That might be good. Now, inside, as I said, there are three band passed filters, one for each band. And there is, they reckon, 60 dB or more isolation between the three. Now, a couple of people have said to me, oh, I don't know about that. You transmit into one port, okay, say on two meters, you're transmitting. Uh, say 50 watts you've got a six meter radio connected to the six meter port with a sensitive front end on the receiver you've got to get the RF in the six meter radio and blow it up no you don't you don't I have tried this out I was chatting to someone on six meters and a very weak station popped up on my two meter radio on S20 very weak station I could only just hear him now I'm listening to him and the the chap that's talking to me on six when it was my turn to transmit on six I thought I'm going to lose the two meter chat it's going to desense it I keyed up didn't affect it not noticeably anyway it just didn't affect it so I can transmit up the one aerial okay and chat to someone on six meters or whichever band and on the same aerial at the same time I'm listening to someone on one of the other bands two meters or 70 sems it really is effective. It works. Uh, someone said, well, what if it goes wrong? Well, what if anything goes wrong? Uh, you know, what if your cam belt breaks on your car? Pistons go up <laughs> and hit the valves. Uh, yeah, what if anything goes wrong? I don't see that it should go wrong. It's, um, it wasn't cheap. It's a nice little unit, though. As I said, made by Diamond MX2000. It really has enabled me to use one aerial and three separate radios. Because before I had to, to plug the, the coax into either that radio or that run or that one, you know, which is such a palaver, I can't do all that. If you're interested, I suspect you are. This is on the website, by the way, g4nsj.co.uk, just go there. For six meters, the insertion loss is less than 0.15 dB. And they reckon you can put 800 watts through it. I don't know, I'd risk 800 watts. Um, for two meters, insertion loss less than 0.2 dB, 800 watts again. And 70 centimeters, insertion loss 0.25 dB, 500 watts. That's a lot. You know, 500, 800 watts through, through that. I don't know. There we are. If you want to try that, <laughs> good luck. Um, I'm only dealing with, what, 25, 50 at the most. Uh, impedance 50 ohms, which we know, SWR, VSWR, less than 1.2 in the amateur bands. Now, this, I've been talking about 6 metres, 2 metres and 70 sems. It actually covers 1.6 to 60 megs, 110 to 170, and then 300 to 950 megs. So the figures quoted only apply to the amateur bands. If you're going outside the amateur bands into say marine uh, VHF or whatever, then the figures might alter a bit. But uh, that's it. Now there's one other thing I want to talk about. I've got six meter radio, two meter radio and 70 SEMS radio. Thought there was a ghost there for a minute. I'll be disconnecting the 70 SEMS radio. It's only a little thing that I connected up in the meantime just to see how it all works. It's not a good radio. I want to get rid of it. And I won't be replacing it at the moment. So what do I do with that bit of coax coming out, the, the, the 70 sems bit of coax, 
out of the triplex. So what do you do with that? Just leave it hanging there or what? No, you don't just leave it hanging there. You put a dummy load on it. Okay, this is a, what's this? 50 ohms, 25 watt dummy load I've got there. It's best to terminate uh, anything like that that's not being used. If you leave a, a port open, it can result in some RF reflections and do weird, th that's a technical term, do weird things. So terminate it with a 50 ohm load. Or if you've got a 50 ohm load, as I've done, stick an old radio on it. <laughs> the, the UHF radio does work, it's just, it does strange things. It changes frequency by itself and stuff. It wants a kick up the, um, a reboot, I mean, a factory reset, not a kick up the... Anyway, there we are. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope it's been of some use uh, to you. Uh, as I said, I, I'm not going heavily into all, all the, the figures and I could put it on the Nano VNA and do tests like that, but uh, you know, it, it would just take up a lot of time and you could do that yourself if you want to. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's great as it is. It works beautifully. And the tests I've put it through, practical tests on the air, it does what it says on the tin. There you go. Thanks for watching. As always, I shall see you next time with something else of interest. Hopefully, I'll do a video on a dummy load. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye.